it's it's that hustle Absolutely. and that drive that rises you above all oppression. One hundred percent. And the blacks have lost that. <laughs> Man, you just slipped that shit. You just <laughs> clap right in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Right now. <laughs> Welcome to the Fall Estate. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, quick reminder that the Fall Estate is now on Locals.com. Locals.com. So click the link in the video subscription to support our work, all right? Thank you very much in advance. I have with me Ryan Sickler. And Ryan is a stand-up comedian and the host of Honeydew Podcast. Ryan, thanks for coming in, man. Thank you for having me. I do appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. I saw a couple of your videos. You're pretty funny. <laughs> I appreciate that, too, man. Thank <laughs> you. And by the way, happy Men History Month. Did you know that August is Men History Month? I did not. Yeah, this is our uh, fifth year celebrating Men History Month. Okay. And then July is White History Month. White History Month? Right. Isn't every month White History Month? I hear that all the time, but I don't know that. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it is. That's the way they built it. <laughs> what do you, how is it every What month? is White History Month? Uh, well, we take a pause to recognize the, the men who founded and created the greatest country on this side of heaven. And, and because right now they're trying to erase that history and put on a fake history. And so I don't want the younger generation to forget real history. Otherwise, they're not going to pre pre appreciate okay. America. All right. Yeah, I did not know that was a thing. Yeah, they're tearing down statues. Are you aware of that? I am. And monuments not. and flags and putting up crap like a George Floyd, an unemployed drug addict with a criminal record. Were you aware of that? No. You didn't know about the George Floyd thing? I know about George Floyd, but you I, didn't know I, didn't they know about a yeah. I didn't know they put a statue of George <laughs> what Floyd. What do you think about that? I, I mean, I didn't even know that. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> so happy Men History Month, happy White History Month. Thank you. You married? I'm not married. I'm a single dad. You know, how many kids you have? I have two kids. My daughter's seven, and her brother's my stepson. He just turned 19. And are they white? My daughter is, and my stepson is mixed. Oh, we need white babies. We need white babies? <laughs> <laughs> we got one. We got one. <laughs> So I want to ask you, that, what do you think about the attack upon men today in America? Men are the most hated species on this side of heaven, and they're doing everything to erase them. What do you think about that? I mean, who's trying to erase men? The, the people who hate men, liberals and some uh, Republican women and others. You haven't recognized the attack, on, especially on white men White Christian men, have, you haven't recognized that? I mean, men have been under attack since the beginning of time. Yeah. Right? Right. And it's worse now, though. I don't know if it's any worse now or if it's just that the internet and social media and all these things that are in the palm of our hand are showing us this every second of every day. Yeah. That's Where a good before point too. you didn't get that. Right. It existed. It's, oh, that's right. I go back to. Richard Pryor's 1979 live in concert special. I watch it once a year. I think Richard Pryor's the greatest stand-up comedian and storyteller of our time. Yeah. That's my opinion. I love him. Yeah, he was funny. But that 1979, which is now, what, 89, 99, 2009, 2019, 43 years old, it, it is exactly what's going on today. Yeah. It's going on. It was always going on. And here's a narrator telling you about this from his experiences and his family and his friends and his people's experiences. And now everyone's catching it yeah. like this every second. So I believe it's always gone on. And I believe it's just everyone knows about it. Well, you know what? Let's change that. I think everyone finally believes it versus hearing it in the 70s, like, oh, that's just him talking. Yeah. Now they believe it because they're seeing it every second. Why don't you think, I mean, do you think there's an effort to stop this attack upon men? Why is it happening without a, a lot of loud noise about it? Well, what do you mean? Why are, why are people not, like, rising up to right. say stop? Stop this. Because if men 
allowed to be destroyed, it's over for the country. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to destroy men. Not all of them? Because a lot of them have been destroyed. <laughs> no. no. Okay. And so, um, and you're right that it's been going on since Adam and Eve days, so it's been going on for a long, long time. What, do, what is the purpose of the attack upon men? Why, why is this attack happening to men? I, I really, honest to God, I don't, I don't know where we're going with this. I don't, I don't think men are under any different attack than women are. You don't think so? Well, look who's attacking the women. Who? The men. In what way? In what not way? Give me an example. Dominating, raping, pillaging, all of it from time till now. Men have been in control. There's nobody stopping men. Who's, who's trying to tear men down? The courts and, and the, the... Listen, the men that are being torn down, most of them should be torn down. You think? Not every man's a good man. You think every man's a good man? Of course not. Right. Yeah. So which good men do you think have been unwrong, unlawfully or wrongfully torn down? Give me an well, example. Well, they're trying to tear down the great white hope. Well, hold on, you're switching subjects here. What men have been, give me an example of a great man that has been torn down that you, you say so many of them, give me one that you feel has been wrongfully torn down. Well, I know men who have been attacked, but real men, they can overcome that. But weak men, they are able to be destroyed. Like with, like with Donald Trump, if you go there trying who to destroy wants him. Men? Who, yeah. wants, who wants to be, <laughs> I don't want a weak man around. Uh, Do you? I prefer to be strong so they exactly. can lead the way. Exactly. Do you believe that racism exists? Of course. Do you have any proof of that? Yeah. Well, give me an example. A proof. Proof that racism exists? Right. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> you can't even be serious. <laughs> Why not? Slavery? How about we take decades, the 50s, the 60s? Am I, I'm, I'm talking to... You, do you believe racism exists? No. You don't? Uh-uh. You don't believe racism exists? I know racism doesn't exist. How, how so? Um, but first, I, I answer that, but I want to hear your you opinion You know what? First. You did. You did ask me, and I'll answer that. Yeah. Um, Give me proof that racism has ever existed. I've dated black women, plenty of them, and I've been hated because of it. I've been threatened because of it. I believe racism is also intent to harm, not just ignorance. I believe it's intent to harm. And when someone wants to harm me because I'm dating a woman of color, I would call that racism. And I've experienced it firsthand many times. So other black people resented you for dating black women? Not only black people, white people also resented me for dating that black woman. And it so, wasn't just one-sided. And so whites and black resent, there are some whites and some blacks that resented you but did you know that once you go black, you can't go back? Yes, you can. Did you know you can? <laughs> you can go Mexican, Puerto Rican, Asian. You can go wherever you want. Amazing. And so, but, but wait, that, now hold on. I answered your question. That's not racism. Tell me about how racism doesn't exist. Okay, let me respond to what you said. Then I will. Uh, that was racism. It's just people were angry and hating you because you were dating a black woman or a black woman. Okay. But that was because you had it from both sides. But they weren't just angry and hating me. I'm telling you, they threatened me. Right, that's still hatred. So I'm saying that's, that's intent to harm, right, and that's where I think the racism comes in. No, that comes from hate. That's coming from anger. Okay, so let's hear your so, explanation. And I grew up on a plantation in Alabama. I'm, you're blowing my fucking mind. Oh, am I allowed to cuss on this? <laughs> yeah. You're blowing my fucking mind right now. <laughs> and I grew up during the Jim Crow era, too. I remember when they were for color... The water fountains and... Yeah, color signs. And the and restaurants that. and everything. Right. You remember this. Uh -huh. You lived it. You don't, yes. You're not just hearing it. You lived it. I How lived. old are you? Seven, 73. Okay, so why do you believe it doesn't exist then? I'm, I'm super interested in hearing this. <laughs> One other thing, I went to a movie theater when I was a teenager in Alabama once. And we, the blacks had to sit in the balcony. And the white folks sat downstairs because we weren't allowed to sit together, Ooh, yeah. but it was fun up there because we had a better view. <laughs> <laughs> That's only something you can say. I can't say that. Well, why can't you say that? Well, I always thought, you know, when they told Rosa Parks to go to the back of the bus, the back of the bus is the best spot to be in the back of it. You know, that's, that's the right. best spot of the bus. Because I get her whole stance like, nah, you're not telling me what to do. Right. But the back of the bus is where it's at. Because when you get on a bus now, the first thing you go into the back so you can relax and see who's coming on and 
and people kind of watch. Be, right. Yeah. That whole Rosa Parks thing was a fluke. It was. <laughs> You're tripping me out, dude. Hold on. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> you just told me you grew up in the Jim Crow era, you grew up on a plantation, and you're still, wait, how does racism not exist? Please, because I want to hear this. I'm genuinely interested in this side of, of right. your opinion here. Uh, during those days, uh, black people and white people understood that our battle was a spiritual battle, that it was a warfare between good and evil. There's evil in some people, there's good in others, and evil hate good. And it had nothing to do with color. It had nothing to do with male or female. It was just right or wrong. And so we knew that the uh, Jim Crow era was about the Democrats not wanting blacks to be a part of the Democratic Party. And, and that's why the Republican Party was started by blacks and white, because they started their own party and couldn't be a part of the Democratic Party. Even with the uh, KKK, they, wouldn't, they were not fighting the blacks because of their color. They were fighting them because when they started the Republican Party, they, 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 they became congressmen, they became leaders in the government, and they were gathering a lot of power. And so the, the KKK and others were fighting them for political reason, not color reason. It was only later in life that they ventured off and said it's about color. It never was. And so the blacks and the whites knew it was about spiritual that you either have anger or you have love in your heart. And so the blacks and the whites got along that knew that. It was only when Martin Luther King and all those guys came along and they created a false idea of racism. They created the uh, civil rights movement in order to divide and conquer for power and wealth for themselves. Even Rosa Parks thing was a fluke because they had another woman to do that thing that Rosa Parks supposed to have done on the bus. And the NWCP has found another black woman to do that. But before she can do it, they found out she was pregnant out of wedlock. And in those days, it was an embarrassment to be pregnant out of wedlock. And they were like, no, we can't use this woman. This woman pregnant. And so they got rid of her and they found Rosa. And it was a setup. But isn't that amazing? Great story. But you still don't believe the... I mean, decades, generations of suppression has anything to do with the color of your skin or no, racism. Because wow. blacks are more suppressive, suppressive wow. to more each other than whites are to blacks. I mean, I don't know the statistics on that, so I can't speak who, to that. Who been killing blacks all these years in the inner cities? Well, let's, let's talk about it. You mean hand-to-hand? -hand? Black people. Killing, right. But Isn't that suppressive? economically... Is Financially, that, yeah, how, the wait, white people have. In what <laughs> That's way? who has. In what way? I just said economically, well, how, how by they, keeping you down. How, how are they keeping them down economically? The school says, I'm from Baltimore. <laughs> no, no child left behind? Bullshit. They're all left behind. The schools are trash. Some of them don't have heat. You right. know, some of them don't have air condition. And how but is prisons, that? How some that, prisons do. How is that the white people fault? Who's running the things in government right now? Blacks and whites. No. You don't you, know that blacks and whites are running? You believe blacks and whites are running it? Who, who's the majority? How many old white men? And as, as, a, as an aging white man, I'm tired of these old ass motherfuckers. I'm tired <laughs> of these old, out of touch men. Do you know Telling that? us what we gotta do. <laughs> Taking rights away from women. Telling us how we got to live, telling us where we got to be. Well, I don't want anyone telling do. me how to live or anything either. But they period. do. But the blacks are doing that to the blacks, too. I, I, listen, I'm not disagreeing mm -hmm. with black on black crime, but I'm saying it isn't just black people. I cannot believe I'm the one taking this <laughs> side of things right now that are holding the black community down in the inner cities. Do you know that when I graduated high school, that everyone in my class, except for maybe two people, are doing very well. And I went to an all-black school. And in 1968, when I graduated, the year I graduated, they, they integrated the school with white teachers then. But all of the black students that I know, they became teachers, lawyers, bought property, scientists, doctors. Why did they do so well? But the blacks have everything right at hand today. 
But they act like everything's so bad. The white man suppressing me. I can't do it. Well, My school's all messed up. I hear Why you Why is that. it like that There's today? two things we could say about that. Let's take the white kids or the Asian kids. We just keep saying white and black. Let's take the Asian kids, all these other people, and at the same jobs that they're in with the black, I guarantee you they're being paid more money. And I you know why, right? they have more opportunity. Now, hold, let me answer the other question. The other thing about... You say, why did these people do so Why Some other people like, why you hold me down? Why? Look, people are who they are. Let's take away race. Let's take away sex. Let's take away all that. You're either a hustler on this fucking planet or you're not. That's right. Period. You take care of yourself. Or Period. You don't. Period. Yeah. Doesn't have to do with our skin color. Doesn't have to do with our sex. Doesn't have to do with our age. That's right. You either hustle on this fucking rock in outer space and you get by or you don't. And I don't think that has anything to do with political, economic, socioeconomic, whatever you want to throw in there, I think that's just, it's just the core of that being. You either got it or you don't. So knowing that, why do you accept the blacks blaming the white people for their failure? Well, I don't accept it. I believe that a lot of it is true. Um, it, but, but I also don't accept the white people bitching about the black people all the because time. They're or sick the of Mexican them. people taking they, their jobs. And nobody all liked the blacks anymore. They all, they've been whining for 60 years now. <laughs> <laughs> Who said nobody likes the blacks anymore? What are you talking about? <laughs> Who did not tell me what the hell this show was? I thought this was a comedy podcast. Aren't you having fun? I'm having a great time, I guess. So, uh, um, black, not all, not all, not all, not all, but most black people are losers. That's why they complain. Man, what do you mean most black people are losers? For example, you mentioned the schools, how bad they are. In Baltimore, I guess you said? Baltimore, from, it's terrible. Uh, there are black leadership that a bunch of money being put into school, but they end up in the pockets of the black leadership and the preachers. The people don't get it. And so as a result, they are not, fin they are not keeping the schools so up. So what you sound like you're describing, though, to me is not color or race, but power. It, you just said the money goes into the preacher's hands. Right. And the, yeah, that's because power, the, okay? That's keeping people down. And why are the black okay? allowing but that to happen? But it also goes though. in the pockets of the white Leadership, Leadership as well. And then they stay up there and keep everybody else down. It's, that's about power. That's not about race. Right. So, so even it's never in the black been about community, race. it has been about race. No. But there's smarter people within the race to figure out we can rise up and fuck everybody else. They're not all about So everybody. why are the blacks are so dumb they can't figure it out? <laughs> I don't think that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 I, excuse me, I don't think that's true. But why are they complaining? I mean... We had a black president. Oh, no, what a mess, huh? <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to say what a mess after the guy we just had for four years that felt like 14 years? Joe Biden? No, hell, he's an asshole, too. I'm talking about Trump. A uh, great white hope? Mm-mm. No. The great white nope. Okay. This country was being re nope. this country was being remade again in, in in America like I never seen before when the great white hope was running it. When Obama was in charge, and I know you noticed it, it was a mess. And the blacks don't like Obama now because they thought he was gonna save them. But instead, there were more unemployment in the black. Wait, hold on, surprise. A politician, regardless of color. Can I say you fucked over yeah. people? Yeah. Power. Again, that goes to power, not skin color. So you agree then that the fallen Messiah wasn't good for the country? Who? The fallen Messiah. Who's that? The fallen Messiah and Big Mama Michelle. You talking about Obama and his wife? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I think they were great for America. Really? Uh, I'll tell you why. For, I, I mean... We're, everyone thinks America is the greatest country in, in the world, and it is. So you know that. I do know and that. And I know that. But here's the thing about America. When it comes to this planet, America are the teenagers of the world. And we act like it. We're young. We're dumb. We're full of cum. We fucking think we know everything. <laughs> we butt in everybody's business. We tell everybody what to do, how to do it. We're number one. Yosemite Sam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Instead... We should be listening to cultures 
that have been around, like China, for a billion fucking years and learn from our elders on this planet. It used to be that way in America. Right? That's what we should When be I was doing. growing up, it was that way. But we that's didn't not what we're doing, because we we're the yahoos over here, the United States of America, full fucking yahoo. But if you think about it, that also makes sense. It's give me your tired, give me your weak, give me your poor. When you would, you'd watch history, they'd say, get these people out, send them to the Americas. They would send their shit over here. So our foundation is built on all these people that said, fuck England, we're coming over here. They're all renegades. And then all these renegades and shit had kids and kids and everything else. And here we are, America, the new kid on the block when it really comes to time on this planet. And we don't shut the fuck up about anything. We think we know everything. We think we've got all the solutions. But we shouldn't listen to China. China's our enemy. Well, I don't mean necessarily China, oh, but okay. Japan. I'm talking about cultures and wisdom, not politics. Do you agree with me that uh, the Western country at, countries at one time... I haven't agreed with most of what you said here, so <laughs> probably not, but let me hear it. Let me hear it. <laughs> that the Western countries led the way at one time in freedom until we started to allow all these illegal aliens to come on and oh. these... Uh, socialist, communist. We are leadership. illegal aliens. You are. Yeah, of course, Where we are. Where you from? My my people are from Italy. They didn't come here legally. Oh, you snuck across the border. They did. They, oh. I snuck. I was here. I didn't have to sneak anywhere. <laughs> I snuck right out of the hospital. But your family came in illegally. I'm sure of it. Oh, I'm well, sure that is an illegal alien. Yeah. But for but those so who are most born of the here. generational people in this country are illegal. No. Sure, they are. How A lot that? of them are. Like who? Anywhere from anyone that came from anywhere else. Are the Indians illegal? Are we talking about Native Americans or are we talking about Indians? Indians. Like the Indians that was here. You mean the Native Americans? Smoking peace pipes and shit. Smoking piota, getting high. <laughs> yeah, they're Americans. Uh, right. If they're born here, yeah, they're born yeah, here. Yeah, they're, they're Americans. Um, I want to go back to something you said about the school system. Okay. And that. Uh, the Asians and the blacks going to the same school, right? Mm -hmm. And or on the job, the, you guarantee me that the Asians probably make it more than the black. That's my guess. Do you know why that is, if it's true? Yeah. Why? S because of suppression and power and racism. No. <laughs> why? <laughs> because the blacks are lazy and they're just <laughs> sitting back Jesus murmuring. <laughs> Is there somebody about to come out here and be like, we got you or anything like that? <laughs> no, no, okay. All right. Uh, the blacks are late. They don't show up on time. Do you have armor on these windows or any kind of like support system, <laughs> security or anything? You said they don't show up on time. You were here on time. You were here early. Because I'm not into my, the blackness. What are you into? Being right and doing right. Okay, but how is that for you? Why, why can you not just be right and do right without worrying about all this other way people behave and do all that? Why because not? Uh, I want to remind all people, but especially black people, they need to return to normal. They're like abnormal. The way they act, the way they kill, the way they hate their fellow man, the way they blame and stuff. All right, this is interesting. They're never going to get better. They need to return to normal, you said. Right. So what was normal? Family. But when? Give me a time. During my time of growing up, Talking during about the Jim Crow 50s, era. 50s? Uh, 60s? 40s, 40s, 50s, 30s, 30s, 40s, 50s. But don't you think that's the time when they were kept quiet and told to shut up and lived in fear of being lynched and murdered no, and killed? And, not at all. No. No. That's a, they make it up history, man. They've lied to you. What? That, Dude, Emmett, was it was Emmett Till, the woman that just <laughs> fucking lied about that, who admitted she lied. That man was brutally murdered, and now they don't even prosecute her because she's old and has health problems. Fuck that lady. Who when cares? Did, when did she admit? She step on her fucking tubes and choke her ass out. When did she admit that she lied? She has admitted it. It's in, the, it's in all the news. They had no proof. She said it. Oh, uh, because they just found her. Yeah, right. she's been, first been spotted. But there That's was right. No, They've been they, hiding her. From what I remember about well, that, why sir, would you hide all these years? Because the blacks coming out of you. Would you hide? Because you're innocent. What would you do if the blacks came out of you right now? Well, I, I wouldn't. Have, I hiding. wouldn't have lied in the first place to have a man <laughs> murdered, and they wouldn't be coming after. But we don't know that she lied. All right. Right. 
So am I wrong when I say the reason that the Asian probably making more money or doing better in school because they work harder, they show up on time, they don't they, they don't sit around a job and be lazy and tell them what to do all the time. Do you it's genuinely a, think there's billions of Asians? Okay, we're talking Japan, China, Vietnam, all of it. Do you genuinely think none of them are lazy? You genuinely think they all hustle and work? Of if course, they did, we there wouldn't be us. Of course, not all. Right. Absolutely. But so enough. why do you think that one in your example is the one that, that is the hustler and not the one that, that is the lazy? But that's not the one that do well. It's the, the ones that work hard that do well. All right. That makes sense, right? It makes sense that if you work hard, you do well. Everything else you said does not make <laughs> sense. If blacks had fathers and mothers raising them, as we did when we were growing up, and they had good as we. What do you mean we? My my age group blacks. You had fathers and mothers and raising grandparents you. and everything, right? Extended family. Yeah. Would would the blacks be better off today? I mean, you're throwing so much in here right now. <laughs> it, are you? I just want to ask a question. Your question. Are you saying that because? Blacks no longer have moms and dads and extended family in their circle raising them that they've somehow gone off the rails? Yes. Is that what you're saying? 100%. I, I, can't, I can't. Do you disagree with that? Yeah, I do. So if I'll blacks, tell you why. If blacks it's a personal have... thing for me. Forget about black and white and all that. I was, my mother left our family. Oh, hold early. it. I want to get to that. That's well, so interesting. I was raised by a single father hold who died thought, when I was 16. Though. Hold that thought. I'm going to get to it in a few minutes here. All right. Uh, so answer my question, if they I'm had trying. parents in the home, setting an example, would they be, the blacks be better off today? I'm going to say yes, but only because okay. everyone would. Well, Asians, we just, Puerto Ricans, We're just Ricans, talking Mexican, about the blacks, Dominicans. Though. But why? Why do we just keep putting it on the blacks? Because That's what I'm saying. Why, and why am I the white guy in the room <laughs> defending this? I don't know. Me either. <laughs> why are you defending How this? How the hell are we not on the same page? <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, do you have anger? Um, less and less these days, but yes, I've worked on that. You have anger. Yeah, of course. And so you had a very interesting upbringing, man. <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting into this. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Very interesting. Tell yeah. the people about that. All right, so um, my mom leaves our family early. My mom and dad divorce, um, but she splits, and my dad is raising us. Uh, they go to court for custody, and the judge asked my dad, and it's a woman judge at the time. This is 1989, and she asked my father you know, what he wants for custody. He said, well, I want my kids, but if you're going to automatically just give them to her because she's their mom, then unfortunately for me, I think the best thing for my kids is that they stay together. It's yeah. me and my two brothers, there's three of us. You have a twin. I do, a fraternal twin. Oh, okay. So um, the judge says, okay, and asks my mom, and my mom tells the judge, I want my youngest son. My twin brother can come if he wants, but I don't want Ryan. And this is a woman. So again, we're, now she takes that robe off, so to speak, and she yeah. says, in all of my years of family court, I have never heard a woman, a mother, say, I don't want my kids. So she gives my father full custody. And in 1989, made my mother pay him child support. Nice, I heard you say that. You don't even hear that I know, today. I know. <laughs> yeah. they, that woman sent a message. Yeah. And unfortunately, my father only lived a few months after that. He passed away in November. This was probably in the summer. Um, so she only had to pay it for a little bit, but she had to pay it. And you were 16, was 16. at the time when your father expired, right? Right. Okay. So my grandmother, his mom, plays a big role in my life. So I, I come from her sister's help out. I lived with one of my great aunts for a while. So extended family. Yeah. I really do feel like the Italian families upbringing and a lot of my black friends upbringing sound very similar mm -hmm. with extended family. So I'm saying it does still exist. But as a man now without parents from 16, here I am. So what I'm saying is regardless of your situation, your skin color, your economic background, we weren't, we didn't have any money. It's, 
it's that hustle Absolutely. and that drive that rises you above all oppression. 100%. And the blacks have lost that. <laughs> Man, you just slipped that shit. You just clap <laughs> right in there. <laughs> oh, my God, right now. <laughs> So well, uh, I'd like to give some back to you, black people. Apparently, you lost it. <laughs> so uh, at sixteen, oh, let me ask: Why did your mother? Why did she hate you so bad, so much? So we reconnected probably just a few years ago. And she didn't even want you. No, he like throw this one in the trash. We, we didn't talk for probably twenty-five years. Wow. Um, when my daughter was born, that sort of started, you know, a different thing, and. Um, I worked on my anger and everything else and decided that my daughter and her grandmother's relationship was really none of my business. Now, if they want to have their own thing, great, but I'm never not going to be honest about the relationship I had as a, a son to mom. To right. my, so my daughter knows her grandmother to be a good woman, but she also knows her grandmother to be a terrible mom to me when I grew up. And she's seven. She gets it. So if she was... A terrible mother. How is she good? How is she a good what? Now? Yeah. What's, well, what's think about good? it, though. We're, we're grown men. This My daughter's seven. So my daughter gets presents. My daughter gets cards. When we're in Maryland, we visit. My daughter gets hugs and kisses. To a seven-year-old, that's a good grandma. And that's what I mean by that. Oh, but you know it's all ego. It's not well, good. Well, I know that this, is, this woman is, uh, you know, look, I, I'll say this. We, ha we all have so many roles in our lives. Some of us fathers, brothers, uncles, employees, business partners, um, teammates, whatever. You can't, do, you can't be good at all of them. You can't. All right. You but can't. why does she hate you so much? I've asked her. She, what did she say? She said she doesn't know. She, that's what, it, she look, like, I don't know why I hated you. I just hated you. There was something about me. Did you look like your father? I look like her. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe she hated looking in the mirror. Maybe. Maybe she hated. Also, look, I was a twin. This is also 1973. So she won't give this to me, but part of me thinks they didn't want, obviously, two at one time. She took some fertility pills. Boom, I'm a byproduct. We don't have twins that run in the family. So that was medical, right? Two kids in 1973 at the same time. But still, why it's would you lot. hate one the son and just like the other one that came out at the same time? I've tried to think. I've tr I've worked on that in therapy for so long. You know what the real answer is? What? That's her problem. It is her problem. It's her problem. Did you forgive her for being so evil? I did. You told her that? I did. And what did she say? She what? she thanked me, but she apologized first. I wouldn't. Here's the thing. I here's a mistake I made younger. I called her. Hmm probably like 2005, somewhere around there. And I just said, I forgive you. I forgive you, you know, and I'm speaking just for me, not for my brothers, not for dad, but I forgive you. I don't think, uh, I said to me, love is a very strong relationship and hate is a very negative relationship. And we have no relationship. Yeah. So by my math, I can't hate you because I don't even know you. So I just want you to know that you don't have to walk the earth anymore thinking that one of your children hates you. And she said, thank you very much. That was it. What was it like? But listen, it didn't change a thing. Yeah, no, it didn't it, change her. Because you can't give forgiveness to someone who isn't asking for right. it. It does. That was for me, it I realized for you, later. 100%. Right? Totally. She should stay crazy, but you'll be free. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, it didn't change our relationship, but it changed me. But why would you? I started to grow more from there. To but why would you trust your granddaughter, your daughter, with her? Because that same evil spirit is inside of her, and she's going to corrupt your granddaughter. Well, I don't believe that. Um, why not? Well, the corrupt part, I don't believe. Corrupt mean she's going to turn her against you? No, that won't happen. I'm she's always, already I'm, working on. I'm, she's spoiling <laughs> her right now. I'm already there. Oh, good. I'm always there you, when they're together. Oh, yeah, nice. There's no alone time or anything oh, like good. that. But even if there was. I genuinely, genuinely know that that wouldn't happen. And she couldn't. She couldn't turn my daughter against me. Nice. There's and no why way. do you still have anger? Well, you mean, to, well, I mean, look, man. Period. When, no, you, just when you, you get thrown her. away like garbage and you're left to literally, I could have been a statistic. I could have been any other statistic, like some of the people I went to school with in Baltimore that are dead from drugs, that mm -hmm. are you know, alcoholics that are on unemployment, that are just sitting around popping pills and living at their parents' place in their 50s. I could have been that. And you know what? Society would have said, well, we understand because of dot, dot, dot. 
and I didn't want to be that. My father was meant too much to me. My grand, you, they died. You were so fortunate to have your father, man. That's it. And, and my grandmother. I can't not. She helped out too, huh? Uh, so she was our mom. Yeah, I know. She was our mom. You know, my mom was gone. This was a woman that was that also couldn't understand how Mother Nature would allow a mom to walk away from her kid. Usually when parents get divorced, they both love the kids. Right. This was, I'm divorcing my family, you know? So. When and, and, and how did you realize that your mother hated you? She told me all the time. you a time, kid? All the time. She like, I hate you? I hate you, you're a loser, you're ugly, you'll never be anything, just nonstop. But Beating not you. physically, mentally, emotionally. But not your twin brother? A little bit of him. Oh, okay. A little bit of him. But my younger brother was the one that she liked. Now, when I say liked, we're talking about a woman that had no problem leaving all her kids. So when I say liked. <laughs> you mean like? <laughs> it's, it's. Not love. Yeah, it ain't, you know. So uh, how did you manage to do so well in life? Your father died when you were 16. Mm -hmm. And so now you're on your own, right? Mm -hmm. And how, how did you. Well, you say you forgave. That is the first step. Uh, that took a long time. Yeah. That took a long time. I carried that anger with me. And, you, you know, also when you go along, you don't even realize how angry you are sometimes. Right. You don't, Most you don't people realize don't realize that. Until you then can get help and, you know, work through some things. And then you look back, you're like, man. Yeah. I used to, I remember when I would do this <laughs> right now and I don't do that. Okay, I'm working and I'm trying. But the undo being thrown away, and it wasn't just my mom. We were thrown away after that by uh, my father's brother, like st stole and tossed us out. Like it just again and again and again, which is why I started the podcast, The Honeydew. The nice. whole point about The Honeydew is it's this perfectly good fruit that most people just throw the fuck away. Yeah. And I was like, oh my right. God. That's a good point. That's me in my life. That's who I am in life. I'm a perfectly good person, but for whatever reason, these people just toss me in the trash. Yeah. And what made me motivated was I didn't want to be a statistic. I nice. didn't want to be that bullshit. And my father, my grandmother, in my, my mind, literally died for us. And there's no way I'm letting those people's lives mean nothing like that. That's so right, man. I'm stepping up. And my brother did too. So my younger brother's a scientist. He works for, um, he's not in the military, but works for the Army in Maryland. Nice. And my twin brother is, uh, he owns a whole salvage yard and does auto recycling and all that, and he's doing really well too. So right. everybody, everybody did well. I'm glad to hear that. Um, do you believe that you can live life without any anger at all? No. And why not? I think anger's good for you. It's an emotion, it's one of the basic emotions, and I think it's, it's something that, um, sometimes anger is a great motivator uh, you don't need to punch people or hurt people, but to be angry about something's a great motivator to get up off your ass to do something about it. And what's it. good about the emotion of anger? Um, it's an op. It's it's an outlet. You know, whether it's a yell, which is it's primal. Anger's primal. Really? Do you know that? Oh, and speaking of the blacks, <laughs> <laughs> who was? <laughs> I thought we got off the black. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're like Floyd Mayweather with him, just <laughs> real quick slipping them in. Okay, back to the blacks, all right. <laughs> the anger that you felt for your mother, mm -hmm. that's what every human being, and especially every black people feel, they hate their mothers. They hate their grandmothers. Wait. Because their mothers. We're saying, you're saying that all black people hate their moms and grandmothers? Every human being that comes through the mother end up hating the mother. So it doesn't matter what race. It doesn't matter what race. It doesn't matter how much money you, you have. your mom? Not now, but I did when I was growing up. But Why? I didn't know because I, I, I thought that emotion was real. I thought I, I, thought I felt love for her, right? Mm -hmm. But, and I'll tell you that story in a minute, but what happened was the mothers, uh, their natures are evil, and, they, and their nature hate the man nature, which is of God, which is good. And, and, the mothers recreate the children in her image. They turn the children away from the father and they play victim. And so the kid identify with them. And, what, and, and then a lot of the mothers impose their will on the children. And the kids hate the mother's will because it's evil. And hate me, they become angry. And the moment they become angry, you become like what you hate. And now they're subject to the mother. In their mind, knowing that she's not a good woman, they 
because that emotion is there and they're afraid to be honest with the mother, they don't stand up to her. And so they end up, those that get married, they end up marrying the same kind of woman that their mother is because they never forgave the mother, stood up to her and forgave her. So they end up marrying women that are just like mama. And this cycle repeats itself. The husband become the boy and the wife become the mama again. And that, that anger still goes on and is passed down from generation to generation. And it's not going to change until you face mama and forgive her for what she's done to you. And when you say, hey, I'm sorry for resenting you, I realize now you can help yourself. God will forgive you. And he'll take that nature of the mother away from you. And your mind will be renewed. And now you can be yourself again. It's a spiritual thing. What? And the blacks hate their mothers and grandmothers. Oh, my God. And all I me and you. I can't believe you just said that out loud and it's being <laughs> recorded. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's not true at all. Wait, wait, all right, hold on. Where do you, you said it's spiritual. Where does this come from? Where is this teaching? Where is this learned by you? It's, uh, it's the beginning of time. At one time, but remember we the guy at Adam, the beginning of time. Remember so that guy, Adam? How'd he, I, I know the story. Right. And so Adam had a good relationship with his father. He loved his father. They communicated without words. He loved his father. And then so the father decided to uh, give Adam a wife because he wanted to uh, recreate human being without having to make him from, with his hand, right? And so he gave Adam a wife. And when Eve was first born, created for Adam, was taken from Adam, boom, to, for him. Eve loved her husband. She obeyed her husband who obeyed his father. And so they loved one another. So one day Eve went shopping over at Walmart somewhere, and Satan was there. And Satan was like one of those liberated women. Satan was Listen, like, of all the things you've said here that sound crazy, the sanest thing you just said is Satan's at Walmart. That's, yeah. the, that's the sanest thing I've <laughs> Well, it may I've not be before. Walmart. It, may, <laughs> it wasn't a Walmart. It may have been a store. But, but the devil's there. Yeah. And so uh, Eve was just shopping, and Satan looked over at her and like, why are you so happy? Well, I'm shopping to make some dinner for my husband. The daddy may come over tonight, so we're tight. We love one another. And then Satan said, but you don't need to listen to that man. That man just want to control you. You could be liberated. You could be your own woman. You could take off your bra at Walmart or anywhere and be free. And Eve was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I love my husband. And so she went home that day and she told Adam about it. Oh, I met Satan today at the store. And she, uh, she was in the produce department because she was picking fruits. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> Adam said, good, stay away from, from the devil. Because once he deceived you, you, he got you. You're going to believe in him and you will no longer believe in me. And she said, all right. And so she went back again and she went to a different store, a grocery store somewhere. Went into the produce again and... Say was there and say, like, you still listen to that man? I told you you could be your own woman. Look, that guy listened to his father. He's not even his own man. And he said, yeah, you're right about that. And she believed the lie of the serpent. And once she believed, because we live by faith, whatever we believe, that's what we live by. And she believed the serpent. And in that very moment, he turned her away from Adam. And now she's going home and fighting Adam, making him want to cook dinner, making him want to have the babies instead of her. And, and I'm like, E, E, what's wrong? She said, well, I saw him Satan today, and I believe what he's saying now. She no longer believed her husband. And so the Satan became her God instead of God being her God, right? Satan became her God. And then uh, she, long story short, she eventually uh, convinced Adam that he shouldn't listen to his father. You need to be your own man. You grown man. Why don't you be your own man? You listen to your father. He's just controlling you. And after a while, Adam believed her. And when Adam believed her, the woman became the man's God. And so Adam would no longer listen to the true God. So he kicked, God kicked him out, right? And that's what's happening today. Even though Christ came and things have been reversed back to order, God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children. But until you overcome the nature of the mother, which is the nature of the devil, and return to your father by forgiving your mother, you will never be free. So men think that being emotional 
and into their thoughts and all that. That's an abnormal state for men. It's an abnormal state for women too, but especially men. Men who are emotional or into thoughts are like a woman. They have the nature of their mothers. And then when you forgive them, realizing they can help it, your whole nature change, come back to the normal nature, which is of God. So this has been going on since Adam and Eve. This is a question I want to ask you. Why do you think that people like yourself, scripture, all these things, why are you so ready to believe this book? Hold on. That was written by man over how many thousands of years passed down? We, we can't. We can, I, you and I can't go tell somebody a story to tell somebody outside the same damn story. Why do you think people like yourself are so into this book that existed in a time that we weren't even anywhere even in the thought process of people's lives instead of what's actually going on right in front of their fucking eyes today. Why? Why do you people look at this old ass book, literally think it's Bible, and try to apply it to a time today when those people were just scared? All that scare, all that, you, you think, look, you think the Catholic Church, that, that whole hierarchy is okay? You think that religion is okay like that? They're, well, I'm they're not into the Bible. Children. I'm not into the Bible. You're talking about Adam and Eve and all that stuff. But those, I'm not into the Bible, though. Those I'm are Bible teachings. But I'm not into the Bible. And parts of the Bible well, was right. inspired by men who... How about these lessons and these teachings from a time that don't apply to today? Why do people like you live in, in a past that... That you didn't even live in your own past. You said it wasn't even racist, and then, and then you're going to go wasn't. back all the way back then well, and apply I, it to today. But why? What have I just told you about that particular story only that's not true? The Adam and Eve one? Yeah. I mean, that sounds absolute. Listen, your version of Adam and Eve, just let me tell you this. <laughs> Except the Kmart part. Your, your version of Adam and Eve, and I don't mean the Walmart and stuff. I just mean right. the, the lesson the of your Adam and Eve sounds as... Um, Dumb and stupid is the one I was taught. Really? They both sound fucking stupid. So, yes, that's so asinine. No, so you no, think Eve bit an apple in the garden and the devil was just, you believe that shit? She listened to the devil You believe for there sure. was a burning bush? Do you believe a burning bush spoke to anybody? I don't know. But Do I you know believe that. a burning bush spoke to anybody? But I, Answer I, that. I said I don't know, so I, I neither believe it or doubt it. I don't know. I don't know. Right, but, but how I do you knew. know about all the other shit then? How do you know about Adam and Eve? Because and Adam's I, dad and all that. How do you know that? Because I can see that it's true. How? And you can too, but you're just not ready to finish. How can you see You that were that's married true. before, right? I was never married. Well, how did you get the second, the first baby? I thought you were married. First baby, oh, he calls me a stepdad. We oh, were, that's his stepdad. We were engaged, oh. but we never got married. Oh, I see. Yes. Um, the devil came do in. Do you think... <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's normal for men to be angry? Well, that's a loaded question. Do I think it's normal for people to be angry? At certain times, yes. Not all the time. Not a constant anger like your being is just red. No, that's not normal. Do you but believe, to have moments of anger, yeah. I do you believe normal. that there's love in anger? Yes, I do believe this. Because, because I believe at that point the anger is... is well-intentioned, but the person doesn't know how to express it. So, do you know that emotions are evil? <laughs> which, which, well, I would say the intent, uh, the emotion that makes me want to murder or kill someone, if I acted it out, that would be evil. Why do you think kids get so upset when their parents correct them with anger? Because that is a universal whether, I don't even care if you, if you speak the same language, if someone's yelling at you, you know they're angry. It's, and a, a child so if seeing a, the, pro, the caregiver up here yell down at them, that's, it's frightening. So if there's love and anger, why would the kids be frightened by that? Because kids are not mentally built to understand that. But they're kids don't kids. react to parents who correct them with love. What do you mean, react to it? They don't you'd be scared. They don't overreact. They see it because kids can tell when the parents of, of hate or of love, right? Sure, and but so you're talking when, about a child's mind. When they, when they, you got to be realistic. No, but this no, a child not, mind more innocent than the adult mind. Right, exactly. So it they doesn't can tell, have the development yet to understand that. But they when can my tell, daughter almost got hit by a car, okay? 
She ran out in the road and I screamed, Stella, I screamed. And I freaked the fuck out, okay? It unhinged me. I went to therapy after it. I started getting scared <laughs> to fly. All of a sudden, I because got scared you overreacted. To fly. No, it's not because I overreacted, because it's power. Because it was control. That was a situation I couldn't control. And so is flying a plane. It's not like I can walk up to the cockpit and be like, guys, move the fuck over and let me do this. I can do that in a car, but I can't do that in a plane. So it became about control. And when I was mad at her for going out in the street and almost getting hit by a car, I wasn't mad at her with pure anger. I was mad and angry with love. I didn't want to my, something to happen to my child. I yelled because I was scared. But if you and, had had real on, love, you wouldn't have overreacted. But the child doesn't understand that complexity. They have a child's mind. They don't understand that. They do understand. You just don't realize they do. I guarantee you, How many had kids you, do you have? I have one son, mm -hmm. two grandkids, okay. and now two great-grandkids. Congratulations. Amazing. But have you ever yelled at your son? In your whole life, you've never I'm yelled. I'm sure I have him right. in the fallen state. And I you have. don't think he thought still you're just angry and there's no love's ever going to come back again? Kids tend to forgive unless the parent continue to do that to them then they can't forgive because they become angry so too. So if you don't think emotions are real, do you think love is real? Yeah, but love is not an emotion. It's not? No. You know, the kind of love you're talking about is like a, you see those little clock where they have this the swing. pendulum swing. Yeah, pink. Like when you feel good, you're up here, right? Mm -hmm. And that feels like love, right? And then when you get angry, you're down here. And that's hate, right? No. Anger is Angry's hate. That's anger. Hate. Also, let's Wait, remember, this, let's this make the point, swings, though. what about bored? Let's what make about it. just bored? Why does it got to be angry all the time? Why can't it just be bored? What do you mean? Well, you said it feels like love up here, but when it comes down here, why has it got to be anger? Why can't it just be boredom? My point, though, if it's love up here, uh -huh. why is it still love down here? It is. No, it's switched to anger. But anger's not real, it's you just told me. It's switched to fear. It's switched to doubt. Anger is real. Anger so, is evil. So hold on. So love's not real. But anger is. But not the emotional love. There can't love. be one without the, the other. emotional love is not real. I had a um, great aunt. Do you hear me say the emotional love? Yeah. I the love you. that is lack emotion is the real love. My great aunt, she's Sister Carmina. She was a nun, very obviously religious. And we would show her the scary movies all the time, Friday the 13th, all that <laughs> shit. She didn't care. Right. But the one that got her was the omen. That was the one of Damien. The, right, I remember the, that. The movie. devil yeah. as a boy. And she would come down the stairs, and when she would see that one on, she'd turn around and go right back up. And I saw it one time, and I went up and I said, Why, why is it this one that bothers you? You don't care about Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street, even um, what was the big one, Exorcist? And she said, Because that one's real. She said, This is a story that is real. This is how it happened. She, that's her belief. And she said, do you believe in angels? And I said, I don't believe in, you know, cloaked, winged, heart-playing angels, but I do believe in spirits and a higher power. I don't believe it's what I was taught in Catholic school. And she said, if you believe in the good, then you've got to believe in that bad. There is no one without the other. So there can't right, be true. anger. Anger is evil. Without the love. You, you can but that have your emotion, opinion about that it. That emotional love is evil, too, because it's based on something. Where does, that, where does that belief from you come from? From God. He told you that? I can see it, yeah. He took see, away the anger. See it in what? Because he took away the anger and he replaced it with his nature, which is of love. And so that's why I never judge anyone. I never get angry at anyone because I understand that they can't see. Somebody cut you off in traffic right now. You ain't yelling, you mother, you don't do that in traffic? <laughs> not never. At, not at all. Never. Never. I can honestly tell you that, never. But because we're running out of time, I got to ask you this. Yes. You're a comedian. Are you concerned about your freedom of speech? Because now comedians can't say certain things. They can say whatever they want to say. That's the thing. Everybody talks about this can it's cancel culture. I, I agree they can say that it. cancel culture is bullshit. Yeah. Okay? It is bullshit. It's, but a lot not of only, it's not even real. But a lot of comedians are afraid to say it because they don't know that they can say it anyway. Listen, after I'm on, the, after this show wraps up, I'm definitely gonna have people watch this, make sure I don't get canceled. Uh, outside of that, um, I don't think any of that. I think you can say what you wanna say. I think, here's the other thing. When you're an artist, uh, fortunately, if you can, you build an audience, okay? Your audience knows you. Right. Your audience knows the core of you. That's right. So 
within that audience, you can get away with saying certain things. Can you make black jokes? I do make black jokes. Oh, it's good. Of course. I like make black, black people jokes. love watermelon. White joke? No, not that shit. I'm uh. funnier than that. That's that's <laughs> crap. I, white jokes. I make Mexican jokes. Nice. I make black jokes. I make Asian jokes. I make jokes about everybody. Um, what did you think about that black guy that went up on stage and smacked another black guy? Will Smith? Yeah, Will. The, I actually tweeted about Chris it Rock, and it went right? viral. Oh, he smacked Chris Rock. What were yeah, your opinion Will about Smith. that? Fuck Will Smith and all the Smiths, every one of them. Yeah. I think that's, uh, you know, look, I said it, and I can't remember exactly how I worded it, but Chris Rock, was the man was doing his job. That joke was basic. Yeah. He, he could have gone way harder. We all know That's Chris right. Rock could have destroyed that young lady. Yeah. And he did a little fucking stupid joke about a movie that hadn't been relevant for how many fucking years, right? And this man walks up on stage and assaults him and then sits back in his chair. And the Academy and the audience applaud him. They give him a fucking award after it. And then they celebrate that man. Yeah. All of this industry is full of shit. Dave Chappelle. Let me was, tell you what's not real. What? This fucking industry and the, and the yeah. love that the love in this industry that's bullshit. It's a comedian entertainment. That's bullshit. Period. Yeah. Entertainment right. across the board. Music. You're art, right about there. that. That's bullshit. I, I totally believe it. Um, one last quick thing. We have five minutes left. Ch David Chappelle. Mm -hmm. Some guy went up and tried to yeah. stab him or something, mm -hmm. right? Uh, does they that concern you? Yeah, that concerns me. Here's yeah. what I believe. That's a great question. The, these people now are getting more and more comfortable with getting out of their seats and coming up in the middle of performances. Yeah. They're seeing a lot of shit online, and crazy breeds crazy. You got a lot of these uh, copycat crimes or whatever. Dave Chappelle was almost stabbed by a man. Could have died. He could have. Yeah. Could have got him in the neck. Could have killed got him, him, right? Yeah. Could have. That could have happened. It didn't, thank God. But my fear now is the more we restrict these people and hold them back, well, how do you hurt someone from a distance? You shoot them. That's a good point. You shoot them. Yeah. So Craig Robinson, another great funny comedian, was, uh, I believe it was in North Carolina, he was at a club, and a gunman came in before the show started, and they were able to get everyone out. No one got hurt. But that's what I worry about now. Because when we're at the comedy clubs, there's no security. When I was in Kansas City, my opener had a pistol on him. And my feature said, you know our opener's got a gun on him? I said, on him. And he bent over. I said, you got a piece on you? He said, yeah, he pulled it out and showed it to me. Good. And I thought for a second, you really got to remember where the hell you are in That's this right. country. 100%, man. It's and, then, and then another guy in the audience is like, I was sitting right down front. I had mine on me, too. And I'm like, man, there's people in these audiences that are carrying. Yeah. And you got to remember when you're in Texas. It's insane, man. Or Missouri or wherever. You got to know your gun laws. And they're in that room right there. So fortunately... The majority, the overwhelming majority of gun owners are good people, smart people, but all it takes is one fucking lunatic in there one night to get up and just shoot somebody. Do you have love? Do I have love? I'm full of love. Are you a Christian? It's real. I'm not a Christian. You're not? Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you love white people? I love all people. How about white people? Yeah, white people too. You love they're white all, people? They're part of our people. Yeah, my daughter's white. <laughs> <laughs> You said we need to have more white babies. Don't you want me to love that white I baby? I want you to make a truckload of them. Hey, man, I'm 49. I'm done making my babies. No, get busy. That's oh, man, that. I mean, Abraham, these can't take it. Abraham man, was 100. I don't give a shit. Abraham was not 100 years it's old. Sarah was 99. <laughs> uh, no. So listen, I got to put you on the hot seat. I, have I not been on the hot seat this whole fucking episode? <laughs> and I, I need you to answer these questions as quickly oh, as possible. All right, I'll try. <laughs> The hot seat. What is a man? It's a great question. What is a man? A man is, I'll tell you what a man is not. A man is not some muscle bound abs, uh, you know, Adonis. A man is a, a person who gets up every fucking day and does everything he's supposed to do that is good and right for his family and himself, regardless of the obstacles in his way. Do we need more white babies? Probably not. Are you an affirmation? <laughs> what? <laughs> I needed to slow this down a little uh, bit. Are you an alpha male or beta male? I'm an alpha male. Do human beings have free will? Yes. Uh, um, did, the, uh, did the cow eat the cabbage? Huh? <laughs> I don't know that saying, but I'm sure a cow eats cabbage. <laughs>
Should men be allowed to compete in women's sports? No. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? It is. True or false, abortion is worse than slavery. Jesus, hold on, let me think about this. Is abortion worse than slavery? Oh God, I'm gonna pass, I'm passing on that. <laughs> Can men get pregnant? No. Uh, who would you rather see as president? Hillary Clinton, Camilla Harris, or Hunter Biden? Oh, <laughs> man, you just pick trash, trash, trash. <laughs> God. I, I, none of them. I'm saying he, I don't. I don't like any of those people. None. Nice. Um, I'll say this. Go ahead. No. 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 I just don't like any of them. Did you vote for the Great White Hope? Obama. I voted N twice. The for Great Obama. White Hope. Oh, Trump. Yes. No. Hell no. Oh, uh, that's amazing. I to voted me. for the Great Black Hope two times. Yeah. That's why, why is it amazing? Tell me why it's amazing. Just because of my skin color? No, because Trump made America great again. Mm -hmm. And Obama screwed America. <laughs> but before you voted for Trump both times? Yes. Okay, so, but you didn't know he was going to make America great again the first time. So why did you vote for him the very first because time? Because when he came down off the elevator mm -hmm. he's, and announced that he was going to run for president, other than my grandfather and men like that, I have never seen such a man of courage and of love. And he was the best president that I, during my lifetime, that I ever see, and he was what America needed. And if ever America needed Trump, they need him now more than any other time. Do you think he'll run again? I hope so. Do you think he'll win? If he runs, he's definitely going to win. If he runs, he's definitely going to win, without a doubt. Even you're going to secretly vote for him. I'm not going to vote for him, but I'll tell you this. I won't argue against whether he'll win again, because last time I didn't think he would, and he did. So right. I won't argue your, your belief on if he runs, he wins. I won't argue that. Amazing. Uh, one last question, uh, quick question here. Um, so do you agree with me now, now that most blacks, not all, not all, are suffering due to the lack of moral character and not racism? Not at all. I don't agree with that statement one bit. Did you have fun? I did have a good time. Thank you for taking on the hot seat and coming on. Tell the folks how to get your podcast and any other information you want to put out there. Um, RyanSickler.com is my website. Ryan Sickler on all social media. And the podcast is called The Honeydew. Amazing. Thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to like, follow, tweet. Check out our merch. And once again, uh, check out local.com by clicking the link and supporting what we're doing. Let me hear from you. And if you have guest ideas, let us know. We'd like to get them on. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate it. And thank you again for coming, man. Thank that was so much fun. Man. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Amazing. <Yeah. laughs> Do you ask the same questions every time? Similar, but real questions.